Hello, here I am at home missing all the fun with my lovely students that I have. Um, but I've been working hard and I really appreciate the feedback you've been giving me on the free uh, weekly tuition that I'm, I put on YouTube. Um, that's been really good. Um, the thing is, with us being in lockdown, um, it's nice to be able to <clears throat> put some teaching out there. So I've built an Etsy shop and I'm planning to put um, videos that cover the information you receive on a full day workshop in my studio. And for people who live a long way away, who don't want to come to Warwickshire, people where I've um, done workshops for art societies, um, I hope um, they'd probably enjoy um, having some of these videos just to remind them of the process and another thing I like about the thought of the videos is that you can replay them, you can stop them when you want, um, you know, have a break from it when you feel like, enjoy the pleasure of it as well as the learning. And so that's why I'm happy to promote my videos on the um, Etsy shop. Uh, there will be about a third of the cost that what you pay for a full day workshop with me, so that's good value. And so what I'm going to do now is show you a small free workshop based on the cow parsley one and all the details that you need to follow if you fancy treating yourself to um, a workshop. Um, as you can see, I've set it all up behind me. I thought, oh, let's set, set the stage. <laughs> um, so I hope you enjoy it and I'm looking forward to putting some more um, workshops on my um, Etsy shop um, in the World White Flower collection, the uh, Fox Glove, the Daisies and the Dog Rose. So thank you for watching. Hello, for this week's free video I'm just going to show you a tiny snapshot of a full day's workshop what we would do with the cow parsley. This has been a very popular um, workshop that I've taught all over the country to art societies and I'm launching a paid video on my Etsy shop. So uh, it's, it's enough information to run for a full day's workshop. So obviously with this little demo, I'll just be showing you little bite-sized pieces of what you can expect. So I'm just looking at this cow parsley here and I'm drawing this in with my um, Derwent Gunmetal watercolour pencil. And I know I'm going like 100 mile an hour. <laughs> so there's my basic composition. And I'm going to put a pen on this now. Nice straight stem, like the strength of those lovely stems. They are very bold and upright. That's the character of the flower. And I've got a new shoot bending over it while it's still soft. This bit here. With that lovely lime green. And then we've got all this beautiful foliage. I'm just going to do a small amount, the curly foliage that you get on your cow parsley. And also the really upright straight grasses that often grow. So you've got the um, those shapes are telling you what sort of species that your vegetation is, like your grasses, your cow parsley. Sometimes you have lovely grasses that bend over, that are already going into flower. For example there okay so I am going to apply my wax crayons and the white wax to get those beautiful clumps like lovely big clouds a little bit there nice and heavy um, you want the wax to break through the very dark colours you're putting on um, another lovely colour 
is the apricot. It's very nice for grasses that are flowering and the flowers you get on stinging nettles as well. So you can imagine a few little uh, little bits of colour from the flowers just showing through. And often with these bottom of these stems you get beautifully purpley pinky bits and I love putting those in. Just get a little flash of colour. And you can use this lovely carnation pink that you get in the pack as well. Okay, so now we're on to this lovely yellow green. This will really sing out once I've put in the dark background in. Now this bit here, look, they're that soft yellowy green still. The new growth. I do like putting um, diagonals in. You've got movement and it it's, uh, gives life to your composition. Okay, let's scribble. All this mass beautiful spring growth um, that bit there just a little bit you can imagine a little bit of the you've got a layer of white and then you've got the little bits of green breaking through okay and we've got the uh, the nice bright green, that spring green that you get. Growth patterns. Beautiful rich green there. What's that developing? Okay. Okay, this is the original that I'm going to work from for your paid workshop. And this is one I did demonstrate very quickly for other students. See how loose it is, I've let the watercolour flow. And so there's a lot of variation that you can achieve with this sort of painting. And so what I'm going to show you now is the, um, we're getting the ink to run. Okay, so I'm putting my uh, reservoir of water around the image not touching the ink yet if you do touch it by accident it's not too much of a problem it's quite a nice organic way to paint so it can be very forgiving so with my brush just nicely wet not too dripping and i'm just pushing around the water and where it's catching the ink you can see this beautiful color developing and what we can do here, we can see the white wax resisting the dark colour. Now with this um, technique that I've developed, you can, sometimes you'll do a painting and it's so delicate and pretty that you may want to leave it at that stage. And it is wise if you're not sure what to do, just leave it, walk away, give it some time, come back when it's dry. Obviously, it will have dried a bit lighter. I mean, they're lovely as they are. But while I'm doing this quick demonstration, I am going to pop um, some colour in while it's wet. Now, I do have a lemon yellow ready mixed. These are all ready mixed. I haven't, I haven't got time in this short one to show you the proper colour mixing. But that will be in the, the uh, full length video. Okay, and also I've got some nice greens ready mixed. We can start, we have a lovely dark background there and that's what's making these show up a bit better. But what I'm going to do is let this run in. Remember, it does dry 
20 to 30 percent lighter don't forget to always check your color before you put it on and have plenty of paint mixed so you don't run out of paint just all those practical things help you achieve really beautiful results um, it's about having the good techniques as much as anything so I'm rather liking this just as it is I'm not sure about that I'm undecided so what I'm going to do is focus on putting my darks around here now this is dark all the way up to that line but I rather like a little bit of light in the top of the painting as though the lights come in through so that will soften and work in there and then I'm going to add a really dark bluey green and this is where it's such fun because you know your wax it's going to run off the wax and look we've got these lovely shapes light and dark put that around there so you've got a really dark area either side of the stem to make that stem stand out now let's imagine there's the diff distant field and the grasses uh, let's just test some more see I've got another bit mixed up it's not quite the same but it's ready and mixed so let's just pop this in here see what I do love about teaching people to work this way is I enjoy getting people to draw and seeing what's there and enjoying observing and once you've done that you've got a really lovely structure to loosen up that will hold up your loose painting I rather like this pattern here it's creating a pattern let's just see there do this is running down here okay I we might I might just add a few more bits here just for your shadows and your contrast and then I think let's just put a bit in as though there's um, you know the grass and you've got the pale showing well also there's going to be some shadow in it so I'm doing some of these shadows the same shape and then we've got some bits coming over as well and some dark at the bottom because all of this vegetation is let's just see on the photo now I didn't take a photo that deep but what happens is towards where you get into ground level there's not so much light and so put some darker there and also it kind of it helps the painting be more grounded the weight at the bottom of your painting so although I was undecided about that bit this bit of weight in the painting here has helped me choose what to do next and I think I'm just going to probably just do a very very soft subtle vignetting towards the end of the page let the watercolour do things for you so there we are, such absolute fun. And I'm just going to let that dry and see how it looks then. Thank you for watching.